Welcome to eclipse season, my friend. We have a new moon solar eclipse in Venus ruled relationship focused Libra. Wherever this eclipse is happening in your natal astrology chart is where you want to restore balance, harmony, love, equanimity. But there's a twist here to this eclipse, and that is that it is conjunct the south node, which means we all have to release something. We have to let go of some attachment in order to fully realize the new beginning that our hearts so want. Now, this eclipse is happening October 14th at 10:55 a.m. Pacific time, 1:55 p.m. Eastern time and 5:55 p.m. Universal time. So adjust the time for wherever you will be on the planet during this eclipse. Now this is an annular solar eclipse also known as the ring of fire, which means that the moon does not fully eclipse out the sun. There is still a ring of sunlight showing through. And I feel that this is so perfect and so symbolic for the fact that we have the North Node in Aries opposing the sun and the moon during this lunation. And that is our destiny. That is our burning heart's desire. That is the fire that's lit in our bellies that's saying, go this direction. Now, eclipses are wild wild card energy. They're electric. They are unstable. They pick us up and put us down in the place that we are meant to be. But in that process, there's often a disruption. There's often something that we don't expect. There can even be what we call a crisis of sorts. It can feel like a crisis to our human self, to our ego self, which then leads to a resolution of a significant change or event that can actually be quite positive. So the ancients used to fear eclipses because they were unpredictable, because they felt like we don't know what's coming, so they caused fear. But we know in modern times that we can prepare for an eclipse, and that's one of the beauties of astrology is that we, when we know that this is coming, we can mentally, emotionally prepare. We can look at our natal chart, see where this is happening, see how it's affecting our specific chart, the planets and points in our chart, which then gives us a roadmap for how we can best navigate the energies. So in this video, I'm going to share with you in which area of life you may feel this unsettledness. You may feel that something is unstable in your life, which is then going to lead to resolution, then going to lead to the change that is best for your spirit, best for your soul. I'm going to share with you, based on your rising sign, where this energy is being highlighted for you. So listen to your rising sign. Also listen to your sun and moon signs because they will give you more intuitive messages. And as always, I will be channeling a message from spirit and pulling an oracle card for each of the signs as well. I'm also going to share with you what aspects are being made with the other planets, with the other points. So be sure and listen to the introduction of the video because that's where I'm going to be talking about these aspects and how we can best navigate the energy, work with the energy with the most ease and grace. And I'll also share with you who's going to feel this new moon solar eclipse the most, which signs, which degrees. And at the end of the introduction, I will also be offering you some tips on working with the energies. But before I go further, I want to say hello and welcome. If you are new to me, you are warmly welcome to be part of this like-minded community. Tap the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a video. And welcome back to those of you who've been watching my videos. Welcome back to my subscribers. Welcome to my new subscribers. And welcome to my Sunday chat friends. Every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time is when my videos generally go live and when I'm there with you in the chat and we all commune and support one another. So please join us. I'm Betsy Gutting. I'm a psychic astrologer as well as an intuitive life coach. And in my videos and my professional astrology consultations, I weave together divine downloads, spiritual insights, intuitive messages, and Western tropical astrology. So at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you more about my astrology consultations and my coaching services so you can get a sense of whether you feel called to work with me. And I have a free gift for you, so be sure and stay tuned to the end to get that free gift. And for those of you who'd like to receive my weekly inspirational astrology updates, you'd like to be the first to get those direct to your inbox, just go to my website, sign up for free, and you'll receive that instant download free gift immediately. 
Now, all solar eclipses are new moons, and during a new moon, both the sun and the moon come together. They kiss, as we say. They commune. They have a conference on what do they most want going forward. But during a solar eclipse, this is amplified energy. There can be more of a sense of urgency. There can more be more of a sense of, I've got to make a change. I need to create a shift. Also, because eclipses are wild card energy, and solar eclipses tend to jumpstart some sort of transition. They are transitionary moments in our life. They can throw us off balance a little bit. So we wanna keep in mind that eclipses are all about course correcting us. They're all about moving us in the best direction for our soul, what our soul truly desires. Now, because this is a south node eclipse, it means we're releasing something. It means we are letting go of some sort of attachment. It's still a new beginning. It's still a new moon, but we have to be willing to let something go in order to create space for that something new that wants to come in. The south node is about fate and karma. So this could be releasing a karmic bond, a karmic tie. A karmic relationship could be a relationship to anything. It could be a person, yes, but it could also be a behavior pattern or a tendency that you have. Or when I think of karmic connections, I think of soul lessons. This is a soul lesson that very likely you have completed, you have graduated from, you have grown immensely, your soul has evolved. So now you're being given a diploma of sorts and saying, now you get to move on. And so why is that difficult? It's difficult because our human selves are highly sensitive, human selves get attached. And even if we know a situation is not good for us anymore, it's still the known, right? It's familiar territory. We know it. We have learned how to manage it, most likely. We've learned how to cope with it. And the ego self is afraid of going into new territory. It doesn't want to leave the unknown. So this is why letting go can be so challenging. And a lot of us, even though we know we need to let go of a job or a relationship, a work situation, a career, a home, a living situation, we don't know if that next thing that we're going to say yes to is going to be any better, right? There's a part of us that's like, but is this going to be better for me? So this is where we're really relying on our souls, knowing our guides, our intuitive guidance, our angels, our deep body's wisdom. This is where we're relying on this in order to move more gracefully forward. So if something is no longer a match to your energy, if it's in a different vibration and that is draining your energy, if it's keeping you from living your full potential, if you know that there's more out there, you know that you deserve more, you know that you could have more fulfillment, something is not working. This is what may be eliminated during eclipse season. But I have to say that eclipses play out over a six month to two year period. So you may realize during this new moon solar eclipse that something is really changing for you, that you have to let go of something, that you have to change a situation, that a relationship probably should, you probably should go your separate ways. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen right away. It could happen six months from now or over the next two year period. Fortunately, with the North Node in Aries, the North Node is helping us to gather courage. It's helping us to muster the courage, the confidence, the boldness to go in the direction of something that feels unknown, that is unexplored territory. And this is where I love the Ana East Nin quote, which is, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Yes, we are taking a risk, my friends. By letting go of something that isn't working for us, we are taking a big risk. The ego is scared by that. But our souls are guiding us forward. They're cheering us on. They're saying, we don't have a choice. We don't really have a choice. We have to follow the voice of our soul if we're truly going to experience the fulfillment that we really want. Now, who will feel this new moon solar eclipse in Libra most personally, most intensely? The eclipse is happening at 21 degrees of Libra. So those of you who have planets or points between 16 and 26 degrees of Libra or the other cardinal signs of Aries, Capricorn, or Cancer, 
you will feel this eclipse most intensely. And I also want to say that those of you who are having this eclipse on one of the angles of your chart, and what I mean by this is if the eclipse is conjunct your ascendant or it's conjunct your descendant or it's conjunct your midheaven, which is career, or your IC at the bottom of your chart, this will definitely be a big life change for you. Now, Libra energy rules partnerships of all kinds, but these are partnerships in which we have spoken or unspoken agreements. You have my back, I have your back. We have this agreement, you're gonna do your part, I'm gonna do my part. We want fairness in Libra, we want balance, we want equanimity, we want mutuality. Libra is the scales, right? And with the scales, there's always a weighing of, does this feel overall, big picture, does this feel equal? Are we both putting in what we promised to put into this relationship, to this agreement? And is this a healthy give and take? Does it feel like a positive exchange of energy? So during this eclipse, we're going to be weighing choices and options. Raise your hand if you're considering different choices, options, alternatives. In whichever area of life this eclipse is happening for you, raise your hand if yes, you're definitely mulling over your options right now. Most of us will be or already are. Because Libra is a cardinal air energy, air is the spoken word, air is communication, air is our going back and forth, our sharing, our speaking, getting it out of our head, talking it through. Cardinal signs are the go-getters of the zodiac. So in this Libra energy, we are going after something new. We are jump-starting a new chapter. We are starting a brand new adventure. Some key words for this eclipse are creativity, beauty, artistry, design, life design, Design, alliances, coming together, breaking apart, relationship breakups, agreements, contracts, ending a contract or signing a new one, negotiating or renegotiating boundaries. And this is key, my friend, this is key. If you're on the fence about something, and this is the beauty of an eclipse actually, when we're on the fence about something, when our ego is too afraid to take that step, we often get a little push by the universe or a big push. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it's a big push. Sometimes it's quite uncomfortable and disruptive, but we get that push because we have been too afraid to take a step in the direction that our soul is guiding us to go. Big picture of a relationship, a situation, a job, a career, a lifestyle, a home is not in your destiny. It's time to let it go or allow the universe to help us eliminate it. The North Node of Destiny in Aries opposing this eclipse wants us to have a life upgrade, wants us to stretch and reach and say yes to that burning desire in our hearts, that thing we know we deserve. For some of you, you could have been working on this situation, relationship, etc., for the past six months or the past year or even longer, where you have been trying so hard to make it better. Maybe in a relationship, you've had the same argument over and over and over, and you're not able to come to peace with it. You're not able to reach any sort of agreement with the other person or you've just been fed up with how you've been treated by somebody else. Maybe they're not a partner. You've just, you've fed up by it. And you realize, I can't change that person. I can't change the situation. I've done everything I could to change it. It's time for me to move on. Now we can look to the last time that we had a solar eclipse in Libra around the same degree in order to get a sense of the themes, the themes that may be coming back up during this eclipse. The last time we had an eclipse in Libra around the same degrees was October of 2004. And before that, it was October of 1996. So you may wanna look back to October 2004 and or October of 1996 and see what changed in my life during that time. Those of you who will be most affected by this eclipse, as I spoke about earlier in the video, most likely you had a big life change happen around these times. Now, whenever I bring this up, there are always people who get afraid that something bad that happened then means that something bad is gonna happen again. And that is not necessarily the case. First of all, you have grown, you've evolved, you've learned most likely from whatever difficult experiences you've had in the past and you've made adjustments. Maybe you didn't heed the red flags before and this time you, you are, you're very much more aware now. Also, there were different transits that were happening during those years in addition to the eclipse that aren't happening this time. So we really wanna just look at the themes and if you feel afraid, if 
if you're afraid that something's going to repeat, then that's a message to take back your power. The whole point of astrology is to empower you to co-create a better life. So I want to give you an example of what happened during those dates in my own life in case it sparks a memory for you or helps you in some way. I always feel that we feel less alone when we hear other people's stories as well. So in October of 1996, my former husband and I built a dream home. We found a beautiful piece of land. We took a stock plan and we redesigned it and added all of our own touches. And I did a lot of the design work on the interior of the home. It was a dream come true. It was probably one of my most exciting creations in my life next to my children. However, in order to build this house, we had to downsize while it was being built. We had to leave our comfortable three bedroom home and rent a tiny, tiny two bedroom apartment, putting both of our kids in the same bedroom. And that was stressful. It was stressful for all of us. So we had to sacrifice something. We had to release an, an attachment in order to say yes to our new dream. Then in October, 2004, I realized that my marriage had ended, had died, energetically speaking. We went to counseling. We couldn't resuscitate it. We couldn't get on the same page. We were in such different consciousnesses by then. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. No matter what I did to try and change it, I had to let it go. And that meant that I had to leave this beautiful home, this gorgeous home, huge labor of love. I had to let it go. I had to let it go to follow the trajectory of my soul. And so for me, this was a period of deep grief, deep, deep grief. But as eclipses often play out, it wasn't until two years later that we actually divorced. So as you can see, for me, this eclipse brings up themes of home, family, and love. And this is because for me, Libra energy overlaps the fourth and fifth house. It's in both houses. So you can look at your natal chart and see where this is happening for you. And of course, in the 12 sign readings, I will be letting you know based on your rising sign, what themes you can expect during this Libra solar eclipse for you. Now, before we jump to the 12 sign readings, I want to share with you how the other planets and points are interacting in a supportive way to the eclipse energies. First of all, Mercury, Mercury in Libra is conjunct this eclipse. It's just a few degrees away from this eclipse, which means that we're going to have a lot of communication during this time. Already Libra is an air sign, that is communication. However, with Mercury in Libra as well and very close to the eclipse, I feel that we're gonna be doing a lot of talking things out. We're gonna be able to get stuff out of our head. We're gonna be able to verbalize any uncertainty, any anxiety, anything that we're questioning. We're trying to make a decision here, a lot of us. We're weighing our options. We're really gonna have an opportunity to confide in those that we trust and get clarity through that. I think this is gonna really help us get clarity. Additionally, Venus is now direct. Venus is now direct. Why does this matter? Because Venus was in Leo for several months, all summer and into the early fall, and this was a self-love upgrade. Venus retrograde in Leo helped us to see where we needed to increase our sense of self-worth where we weren't claiming what we deserved fully. So this was about self-worth. It was about deserving. It was about self-love. And we came out of this Venus retrograde being much more clear on what it is that we want. So now that Mercury is direct, Venus is direct, getting clarity will be easier. But also you may have shifted your priorities during that Venus retrograde. You may have new values. You may know now much more clearly how you want to spend your time and energy and what is draining your energy, what you have to say no to, what you have to let go of. Now, the most standout aspect, supportive aspect that we're having during this eclipse is Mars in Scorpio. Very synchronistically, Mars is going to go into Scorpio just before this eclipse. It's so funny because I keep getting interrupted by these really loud trucks that are going up the hill. It's like that feeling of being under construction, disruption. It's like, oh my goodness. Okay, so Mars in Scorpio. Mars goes into Scorpio just before this eclipse. And Scorpio is about shared resources. Scorpio is a partnership energy. It's a money energy. It's where we want deep emotional intimacy and connection and sexual intimacy and connection. So 
Mars, the planet of action, motivation, drive, in Scorpio, this partnership arena, is going to be making a trine with Saturn retrograde in Pisces. Mars and Saturn, we feel these energies. A trine between them is about being motivated to create a new solid foundation underneath us and let go of anything that isn't foundational, that isn't supportive, that isn't stable. So we are supported to take action during this eclipse to strengthen our foundation and especially emotionally, especially where we've been pulled all over the place emotionally since Scorpio and Pisces are deep water signs. We are now saying, I need to feel more emotionally supported, solid, safe, and secure. And I'm going to do what I have to do to make that happen. Also, this Mars trine Saturn really helps us to build something long lasting, something that's gonna support us for years to come. Okay, so I have a few tips that I wanna share with you on how you can work with these energies with the most ease and grace. And the first one is honor who you are now post Venus retrograde. Be fiercely honest with yourself about what is draining your energy, what is boosting your energy, and what you truly need to be happy and be willing to invest in that, my friend. Be willing to invest in your happiness. Tip number two, honor your intuitive knowing a truth may come to light for you during this eclipse. Honor it. Don't discount it. Don't negotiate it away. If you feel it in your belly, if you feel it in your heart, if you feel it in your hips, you know it's trying to give you a message of truth. Third, use your breath. Your breath is your best friend. A cardinal air sign Libra, your breath will be your best friend, especially during a volatile eclipse time. And here comes another truck. If you're confused, if you are, you're getting analysis paralysis as you are weighing the pros and cons of your options and choices, talk it through with a trusted confidant and remember that I can do an astrology consultation and or a coaching session with you to help you get clarity as well. And perhaps most important, remember that you always have choices. You may feel, some of you, you could feel trapped but you are not trapped. Trapped is a mindset. It's a mindset. It's not the truth of who you are. You're always free to create a new reality for yourself, even when, and I know a lot of people have very difficult circumstances, but even in difficult circumstances, the universe, your guides, the cosmic intelligence, we have Uranus and Taurus, Uranus always finds a workaround. Ask your higher power, show me my options, show me a solution. Just remember, you may have to let go of something to make space for that wisdom to come through. Okay, my beautiful friends, so let's do the 12 sign readings now. Listen to your rising sign, which is the area of life, the area of your chart in which this solar eclipse is happening for you. Also listen to your sun sign. Your sun sign is how your ego personality will be feeling these eclipse energies. And your moon sign is how you will be interacting with the eclipse on an emotional level. So let's start with Libra. Hello, beautiful Libra. Libra, you are having this eclipse in your first house. Your first house is the house of your identity. It is the self. It's how you want other people to perceive you and how you are perceiving yourself. This is the roles you play professionally and personally. So it's your title at work. It's also your title within your family, your various relationships. It's your appearance, your look, and your vitality. So it's also a health house. It's how much energy you have. And so for you, Libra, in this house of identity, in this house of the roles you play, your status, the image you project to others, how you see yourself, this is where you're going to be releasing some attachment. You're going to be letting go of something. There is going to be some sort of ending here for you. So for some of you, you're going to release a role that's no longer appropriate for you in a job, for example, or you start your own business and you take on a new role, or you get a new business partner and that changes your role, or a relationship changes and that changes your role, or somebody enters new enters your family and you get a new title, or somebody leaves your family and that changes things for you. And as you release this attachment, this is when you have now room to start a new beginning, to 
remake your whole identity. So as you can tell, Libra, this is a big, big eclipse for you. It's a major eclipse for you because the South Node is here. South Node says we have to let go of something karmic. We have graduated from something. A soul contract has ended. And this creates space for a whole new life chapter. Now your message from Spirit Libra is that this is an exciting change and it's going to call on you to muster courage. You can do it. Spirit's message for you is you can do it, Libra. You are prepared. You are ready. You don't have to know everything that's ahead of you. You don't have to know how you're going to make it work one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. Get support if you need it, Libra. Don't try to do it by yourself. Get support. It will really help you if you're really feeling emotionally stressed or overwhelmed or confused about what to do. I hope that you will get support. So I am shuffling the cards for you, Libra, and let's see what the cards have to say for this beautiful, exciting new moon solar eclipse in Libra. I don't know if you got to watch my Libra season video that I just put out last week, but in that video I said, we mystics, our mystical selves love eclipses, love eclipses. It's our ego self that's afraid, our ego self that is stressed by the uncertainty of it all. So call on your mystical self, beautiful Libra, to embrace this new beginning and know that you will have help from the ethereal realms as well. Okay, so your card. Ah, <sighs> Libra. Your card is healing chaos. Have you had chaos in your life, Libra? Have things been disruptive? Have things, the, the light always gets weird when I do the cards here, but have things been a little crazy for you? This is a really beautiful card that says that's healing for you now. The worst is behind you. The tornado is over. Whatever was thrown up in the air, like the cards of your life thrown up in the air, the pieces, you know, scattered all over, whatever happened for you, you are now healing it. You are promised a healing during this eclipse, during eclipse season. So this is really beautiful. This is a fresh brand new start for you. Beautiful Libra, the best is yet to come. Does this resonate for you? If it does, leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Okay, Virgos. Hello, beautiful Virgo. Virgo, you are having this new moon solar eclipse in Libra in your second house. Your second house is your house of material security. It's the income that you earn. It's your values, your new values post the Venus retrograde. It is also your sense of self-love, self-esteem, self-worth, how much you feel you deserve. These are the themes that are going to be coming up for you. And you're being asked to release some attachment. And this could be a job or a way that you earn money, or this could be something that you feel you need for your self-esteem, something that you feel for your material security, you're being asked to release it in order to upgrade your life, in order to upgrade in this area of life, make more money, feel better about yourself, love yourself more, um, make sure in order to like match your life, your real life with your, with your true values, in order to, to move into a more authentic place, you're being asked to release something in order to then open up space for a brand new beginning in one of these areas. So as I said, it could be a new job, could be a new promotion, could be starting a business, could be earning money in a new way or doing something else that's going to make you feel better about yourself, that's going to make you feel more material secure, more materially secure, safe, and like I'm taking care of myself. I'm relying on myself. This is a house of self-reliance and this eclipse is moving you forward to up-level your sense of self-reliance. So Virgo, your message from spirit is that you're on a climb. You are climbing. Keep going. Don't stop. You're moving yourself in the right direction. But yes, climbs can feel um, tiring at times. Climbs can feel like, oh, am I ever going to get there? Climbs can feel very stressful. So but you have a goal and you have a vision and you have a, 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 a 
trajectory, a place that you want to go. Like when you go on a hike, I don't know if you guys hike, but when you go on a hike, you know, you want to get to that view and you have that view that's like the carrot that's held out there so you can, or the waterfall or the, the lake that you get to swim in, whatever it is, there's something that your heart really wants that you are climbing toward. Okay, so Virgo, shuffling the cards for you. Ah, Virgo, what do the cards have to say for this eclipse for you in October in Libra? Virgos, transformation. Virgo, do you feel that you're in the middle of a transformation? What's coming to me is that the south node's here in your, in your second house saying, got to release something. The north node's in the eighth house of transformation, the north node in Aries, saying time to transform, time to become the butterfly, to become the phoenix rising from the ashes. And what I love about this card is there's so much creativity here, so much beauty in the color and the rose blooming. And um, there's just so much beauty in what's happening for you. Beauty inside and out, Virgo. Are you claiming the truth of who you are, the truth that you are beautiful inside out and out. Are you seeing yourself as the rose, as the gorgeous butterfly? You see the two colors here. There's the yellow, which is our cognition. It's receiving downloads in a claircognizant kind of way. And then there just that sort of just know, I don't know how I know this, but I just know it. And then there's the blue, the throat chakra, which is what we receive from talking with others, what we receive from talking to our angels and our guides and our ancestors, some of us. So I'm bringing this up because these are tools for you to use in receiving the guidance that you need, Virgo. You're not alone. Transformation is uncomfortable. Transformation is a death and rebirth process. But when you come out of this, you are going to be a brand new, beautiful butterfly, beautiful Virgo, and your life will not be the same. So leave me a comment. Let me know if this resonates for you. I love connecting with you. Okay, Leos. Hello, beautiful Leo. Leo, the good, really sweet news is that this eclipse is making a sextile to your energy, and sextiles are opportunities and solutions. With a sextile, we get something shown to us that if we say yes to it, it really moves us forward. It's that life upgrade that we're all seeking during this eclipse time. Now, this is happening in your third house, which is communication, mindset, it's the intellect, it's writing, speaking, presenting, uh, your everyday errands, your everyday um, schmoozing with people. And so this could be like writing a blog, it could be publishing something, it could be starting a yoga studio, starting a new business in your local environment. This is also siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, it's your hood, it's those people that um, you have relationships with in your neighborhood for other things like um, a mortgage. I always think of homes when I think of third house as well. So like a landlord or like a, whoever gave you a mortgage if you own your home, um, whoever, the, whoever you interact with that affects your home environment, your local environment. This is also your vehicles and your devices. So this is where you are letting go of an attachment, says the South Node. Got to release something that's a karmic ending, that's no longer that's expired, that's no longer right for you, and where you are saying yes, then creating space to say yes to a heart's desire, a burning heart's desire, and that burning heart's desire could be coming in from that ninth house where the Aries North Node is for you, and that is um, higher learning. That's taking courses. That's getting into a graduate program that's expanding you in some way, world travel, other cultures, uh, something that will expand your mind, um, new spiritual beliefs, new adventures, uh, all of the above. So Leo, your message from spirit is that it's time to give yourself permission to let the fire burn in your heart. Because when you say yes to a burning desire, and especially if it's one that you don't know how you're going to make it happen, that is really the, the definition of a soul's desire, a soul's trajectory. The soul wants us to grow and evolve. So it's going to give us things that we don't know how to do on our own, right? We need support. We need universal support. We need support from our the unseen realms to make it happen. Um, 
but first we have to know what we most want in order to get that support in other in for in order for the universe to be able to meet us halfway we have to go halfway there we have to get here right with the heart um, centered in our heart so your message from spirit is that when you do that then the courage then the boldness will rise up in you for you to embrace the unknown for you to be to have the courage to walk into the unknown then it will happen for you so focus on what your heart wants most leo and ah, i've been shuffling so let's see leo what the cards have to say for you beautiful leos for this libra new moon solar eclipse leo wisdom so now i see where that message from spirit was coming from because this beautiful mermaid is doing a deep dive she's going way down to the depths to the, the bottom of the ocean to get clear to get her wisdom to figure out what it is that she most wants she's taking a deep dive so i think your message is number one acknowledging that you are wise that you have the wisdom within you to navigate what could feel like an unstable time, but also be willing to go deep. Be willing to go deep into your imagination, beautiful Leo, to get the answers. Because when, for example, you do a guided meditation and you go really deep and you recognize something, something comes to you and just like a whisper, a whisper that opens you up, it's a game changer. It completely changes everything for you and gives you the sustenance, the nourishment, the soul nourishment that you need to go forward. So I have some guided meditations on my YouTube channel. I will link to that playlist below. I also have a free guided meditation that you can get when you sign up for my inspirational updates. And the link to that is below as well, beautiful Leo. Happy new moon solar eclipse. Okay, Cancers. Hello, beautiful Cancer. Cancer, you are having the solar eclipse in your fourth house of home, family, childhood conditioning, your roots. This is where we seek belonging and stability and a sense of acceptance in life. And this can mean that this eclipse, I have to say, is could be a bit discombobulating for you. It could be bring up some anxiety for you only because eclipses tend to be electrified. They tend to be wild card energy. They do bring often unexpected things into our lives, especially if you have planets or points in the 16 to 26 degree range of the cardinal signs. So Cancer, this eclipse is going to bring up your sense of safety and security in your home. Some of you could be moving. Some of you could be building a new house. Some of you could be creating a beautiful home sanctuary for yourself, remodeling, redoing in some way, choosing a different home. Some of you could be fed up with a living situation and finally going out of your comfort zone to find a new one. Don't be dissuaded, Cancer, if it takes you a little bit of time to find the right place. Don't let that get to you. First, you may have to release a karmic attachment to your old place or the people that are involved in your current living situation. You may have to do some karmic releasing there first in order for you to find the new situation. Also, because this is also family members, some of you are having something go going on with a family member, whether it's in your home or not. And this could be any family of origin member or someone in your the family that you created with your own children. Some of you as well may be doing some healing, some clearing emotionally in the realm of childhood conditioning, reconnecting with your inner child. And I do have a video for you on inner child healing that I will try to remember to link below that could also be helpful for you. But remember Cancer, this is opening up an opportunity for you to upgrade your home or family situation. And Cancer, because this eclipse makes a square to your energy, you're going to be motivated. You probably already are. You're probably already taking a step or steps to find a better home or family situation or to remodel or to do the things on you that you need to do in your existing home. You're probably already doing that or with existing family members. 
you're probably already taking these steps. Eclipses change our life. They are life changing if it's close to any of your planets or points. This is going to be big for you, especially because home and family, the fourth house is an angle in our chart. And as we all know, our home is our sanctuary. This is where we feel safe, especially cancers. And if I haven't said it, I have cancer moon, cancer rising. So the square may bring pressure and tension, anxiety, but it's going to light the fire underneath you to take the action you need to take cancer. Now your message from spirit is that if you feel discouraged, please remember that all is not lost. Whatever is up for you, you may have to do some tapping on it. I love tapping for moving energy, some sort of emotional clearing, have a good cry, release something, and then go after what your heart wants. Just think of it as taking out the garbage. I have to let this thing go. And also, Cancer, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a hug, give yourself an add a girl or an add a boy for having graduated from the karmic soul lesson, lesson that is requiring you to let something go. You wouldn't be letting something go if you hadn't advanced beyond it in your soul's evolution. So Cancer, let's pull a card for you and see what the cards have to say. Ah. <sighs> for this very exciting, exciting to our mystical selves, <laughs> exciting solar eclipse in Libra. <sighs> Cancer, your card is action. How perfect is this? This is what I'm saying. Square energy, you're going to be motivated. You're going to be determined. You're going to have the drive to take action, it is time. Do you see all this like ring of light up here? It reminds me of eclipse energy, but also it reminds me of the fact that all this yellow is a just no feeling. Trust your intuition, Cancer. You are psychic, you are so psychic. You know what you need to do. You know what's right for you. You probably have been given giving a certain situation way more leeway than it's deserved anyway. You've probably really been through it with something. <laughs> Leave me a comment. Let me know if this resonates for you. You've probably been already, as cancers tend to do, you know, we have these crab claws that we tend to hold on tight to something and we don't want to let go. We don't want to let go. We keep hoping that it will get better. We keep hoping that the other person or, you know, whoever's in power, in charge, whatever, will change. And then finally we realize it's not going to change. I have to find a new, I have to move to a better place in some way, shape or form. That's metaphoric. But all this yellow energy is us receiving that divine download. And then all this orange energy is us taking that action in very creative ways for some of you, really letting the creativity the drive, your heart's desire, move you forward. And if you feel stuck, move your hips, move your hips, do some dancing, dance your prayers, sweat your prayers, cry out those tears while you're dancing and that will move you forward. That'll create space, beautiful cancer. You can do it. Okay, Geminis. Hello, beautiful Geminis. My natal sun is in Gemini. Gemini, you're experiencing this new moon solar eclipse in your fifth house. The fifth house is true love and romance. The fifth house is adventure and fun. It's the inner child. It's letting your inner child freely express. It is also your creativity, full creative expression. So anything that you create, some of you are creating something new that you want to put out into the world, a new screenplay, a new art project, a new song, a new album, a new one person show. Many of you are a book. Many of you may be creating something that, that is your creative child that you're putting out into the world. And this is also the house of children. So you could be having a new child. You could be having a new family member coming into your life. You could be deciding to date, to finally date. You could meet someone that really is a beautiful match to you now because it's a south node eclipse. It's an ending eclipse. You have to release some attachment. You have to let go of a relationship that's not working, or you have to maybe ask that child who's been living with you forever, who's an adult now and isn't, you know, it's not balanced. They're not pulling their own weight. Maybe you have to ask them, tell them that it's time for them to move out and leave the nest, so to speak. There's some action that you have to take, beautiful Gemini, 
that is then going to create space for what is in alignment with your energy, what is is a match, current match to your now vibration. And yeah, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else. Oh, also this solar eclipse makes a trine to your energy. That's ease, grace, and flow. That's the wind at your back. That's something falling into place for you, Gemini. That is really good news. And your message from spirit is open up, take a risk. You, you only live once, spirit said, take a risk. Now we who believe in past lives may say, well, we don't only live once, but this is your one life in this body. This is your one life with this particular set of desires. You know, I think we do it differently every time. So take a risk, say yes to your heart, beautiful Gemini, and things will, you'll get the support you need. You've got that trine energy. You have that uh, spiritual assistance, that protection, divine protection. So let's pull a card for you now. <sighs> Gemini's. And your card is Illumination, Gemini. There's something that some of you have been foggy about. There's something that some of you have been unsure about, maybe having trouble making a decision. Something you haven't, you've needed clarity on, you're going to get the illumination. You're going to get that light bulb moment. You're going to get that epiphany. You're going to, going to, the mist is going to clear. The fog is going to clear, Gemini. And that's really going to help you to move forward. I want to say that Saturn, if you have planets or points in the early degrees, Saturn's been squaring those planets or points. Um, and if you have planets or points in the third decan, the later degrees, you could be getting a square from Neptune and Pisces. So a lot of Geminis have felt kind of fuzzy on what's the next direction, direction some confusion. But you're going to get the illumination that you need in order to move forward, Gemini. Leave me a comment. Let me know if this resonates for you. I would love to hear. Okay, Taurus. Hello, beautiful Taurus. Taurus, the new moon solar eclipse is happening for you in your sixth house of wellness, your sixth house of daily habits, your work, your routines, your schedules, how much freedom you have, how much flexibility, how much rigidity there is that you might want to change, beautiful Taurus. This is a transit that is helping you to jumpstart your overall health and well-being on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally. This is really going to help you to shift anything that is out of alignment in terms of your health, your wellness, your schedules, your routines, your structures, your systems even. You are Venus-ruled Taurus just as Libra is Venus-ruled. So you're both Venus ruled, which gives you a commonality that I feel is going to be supportive to you during this eclipse. Now, your message from spirit is you are worth it, beautiful Taurus, whatever upgrade you want, however you want to change that's going to help you to feel a, a brighter sense of wellness, you're worth it. You deserve it. For some of you, this may mean you're spending more money or you're cutting back on your schedule or you're working you know, you're working fewer hours or you're completely changing your job so that you can feel better. And you may be kind of like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, you know, if this is going to give me the security and the stability that I need. But if that's the case, spirit saying, don't question it. You need it. Yeah. Look at your bank account. Look at your budget, all of that stuff. But then give yourself permission. Put your wellness first. Put your wellness first. Okay, Taurus, what do the cards have to say for beautiful Taurus? Your card is, ooh yeah, oh yeah, change baby change, change baby change. I love the ethereal quality of this card. I love that this is so childlike to me. This is so, to me, this is about letting yourself dream, Taurus letting yourself go to that place of wonder. This is the kind of thing you would see in a child's room, right? It might be like a music box and you'd wind it up and the horse would go round and round and maybe this hot air balloon would go up and down like a mobile, right? And it would be very childlike and very, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, that's so frustrating. Whimsical, very whimsical. There's a whimsical 
uh, tone to this card. And to me, it's saying, go back to your inner child and ask that part of you what he or she wants, what he or she needs, and allow yourself to make changes that will be good for that part of you. And in the process of the change, because change is always hard for, for our ego selves on some level, in that process, hold that inner child in meditation, in your imagination, hold that child and let him or her know that you will always be there for your inner child. They will always be safe. You always have their back. If this resonates for you, Taurus, let me know. I'd love to connect with you. Okay, Aries. Hello, beautiful Aries. Aries, you are experiencing this new moon solar eclipse in Libra in your seventh house of committed partnerships. Now, Libra energy is all about committed partnerships, committed relationships, relationships with significant others, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends, but also clients, also close friends, also adult children. So you're having, this is going to be relationship flux for you, Aries. I would be very surprised <laughs> unless you only have a relationship with your pet. And even then, you know, this, you know, everything is happening as above, so below, as within, so without, right? Everything is happening for our soul's evolution. So Aries, I think you're really, really going to feel this, especially if you have any planets or points around that 16 to 26 degree cardinal sign uh, range that I spoke about. Um, this is an upgrade to your relationships. Some of you are going to have relationship changes, big ones. Um, others that you could have a new one come in. You could be finally saying, I can't fix this relationship. I have to let it go. Or you're shifting a dynamic or you're fi fixing a behavior pattern that you know isn't supportive to you in your relationship life. Um, if you don't have a partnership, it it's still happening inside of you, beautiful Aries. You're still going through a big change inside of you as far as how you relate to anything significant in your own world, anything that gives you a sense of grounding, stability, because healthy relationships bring us stability and grounding, right? And that's what we're all seeking. So um, Spirit said to you, this eclipse is all about you. It's all about your self-nurturing, your self-love, and you are going to receive a moment of clarity that's going to change how you see everything, Aries. And now some of you may be going, wait a minute, you said this is about relationships and spirits saying it's all about you. What I mean is focus on you. Yes, if you're in a partnership that you need to work on, that you're going to counseling you know, for whatever, yes, do all of that. But keep your focus on your heart, what you want most, what you need most, and you'll receive the clarity that you need right now, beautiful Aries. <sighs> so let's pull a card for you, Aries, and see what the cards have to say for beautiful Aries during this Libra new moon solar eclipse. And your card is beautiful Aries. I love this card. This card is a portal. Check out the portal. Eclipses are portal energy. They are often very intense. You're not alone. You're going through this portal. You are headed into the light, beautiful Aries, but check it out. You have a tiger. You have a tiger waiting for you to usher you through. And it's a big tiger. You could even ride this tiger maybe. But the idea is this tiger wants to support you, Aries. And as I'm looking at this card, it's so interesting. I don't, it just looks this way from afar. It does look this way close up, but I see an angel up here. That's wild. I see like a golden outline of an angel. But when I pull the card close, I don't see that. I don't see it. But when I'm looking at it from a distance in the camera here, I see that. It feels like a benevolent feminine energy that you can call on for support. How gorgeous is that? Look at all the creativity here, the orange and the, the purple and so much green. This is a healing portal you're walking through, just be flexible. Be flexible. Know, know that you are in flux, Aries. Know that the more you can be flexible with yourself and with others, the more you will navigate this period with ease and grace and it will feel less stressful for you. Be flexible, but stay true to yourself at the same time. Beautiful Aries, let me know if this resonates for you. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear. 
Okay, Pisces. Hello, beautiful Pisces. Pisces, you are going to have, I feel, a quite transformational eclipse time. Why? Because it's happening in your eighth house of transformation, death, and rebirth. This is the house of where we do the deep dive to make changes from within, where we receive unconscious truths that we didn't see before. And it's also the house of money. And not surprisingly, because money is something that is transformational for most of us on some level, right? A lot of us grew up with beliefs about money, conditioning around money that affected our sense of deserving. And so this is the house of taxes, investments, loans, um, you know, like retirement savings. This is the house of shared resources with partners. This is the house of emotional and sexual intimacy and the house of taboos, things that we tend to only speak about in the private <laughs> privacy of our own homes or our own minds. <laughs> and it's a house of deep, deep bonds. So it's relationships and money, Pisces. And it's the kind of energy that will take you into the chrysalis, that will have you then come out after you've done that inner work as the butterfly. This is rising from the ashes. This is really big energy. And with Mars now in Scorpio, for any of you who have planets or points in Pisces in the low, very low degrees, that could make a really nice trine to the Mars that has, that's moving into Scorpio for this eclipse that would be really nice for you, Pisces. Um, your message from spirit is you will know even more who you are at the end of this eclipse season. You are on a journey of self-discovery. Stay true to yourself, Pisces. Stay true to yourself. Trust the process. You may feel very much in the process. You may very much feel like the goo that we are when we are in a chrysalis. <laughs> Trust the process. You're not going to be for a hair forever. You're not. You're going to come out of this and you're going to be, if you've been in hermit mode, if you find yourself just wanting to stay home and wanting to do deep dive kinds of practices, beautiful. That's perfect for this time. Pisces, so let me pull a card for you. And I want to say that because it's eighth house and it's a partnership house, some of you will be letting go of partnerships. Some of you may experience a breakthrough. Breakthrough. I love that that came through. A breakthrough, breakdown, break free, breakthrough. Yes, breakthrough, break free. And look at this card. This card is so eighth house to me because of the darkness in the card and eighth house is the unconscious mind. It's the deep resource recesses. And there's, to me, this is goddess Kali. There's a volcano and it's erupting. To me, that's goddess Kali energy. That's Kali and that's eighth house. I love these synchronicities. Kali saying, be fierce, be fiercely honest with yourself. Be true to yourself. Tap into your potential. There's so much potential. Check out this volcano. What if you were the volcano? What if you had the power to erupt with creativity like this volcano is. And some of you may feel like you need to erupt with anger. I should say that during this eclipse because the North Node is in Aries and it is opposing this eclipse. Aries does have, um, well, we tend to get frustrated in Aries energy. <laughs> we can anyway. So my point is that this is about you expressing your creativity in beautiful ways. Yes, deal with your anger in constructive ways and know that you have unlimited potential, untapped potential that is calling to you, beautiful Pisces. You are artistic. You are a beautiful, deep water sign connected to the divine. Tap into that creativity. I think that's going to really help you move through any uncertainty, any flux, and maybe quicken your transformation as you emerge as the beautiful butterfly. Beautiful Pisces. Okay, Aquarius. Hello, beautiful Aquarius. Aquarius, you are experiencing this new moon solar eclipse in Libra in your ninth house of expansion, beautiful Aquarius. You're going on a journey of expansion. This could be through long distance travel. This could be through any adventure that's calling to your heart. This could be learning a new metaphysical modality, signing up for a certification program, learning more about astrology. The ninth house is connected to astrology. Um, this is you feeling protected. This is you feeling 
wise. This is your spirituality, your belief systems, long distance travel, other cultures. This is you seeking out brand new horizons. I call this the road trip house, even though road trips tend to be shorter trips, which is third house. But think of yourself going on a long distance road trip across the country, for example. That would be this, 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 this imagery of getting to the top of the crest of a hill and not knowing what's next, not knowing what's below you, and you come into the sunlight, a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Now remember, Aquarius, you have to release something. You have to let go of something. There are so many trucks going up and down my hill as I'm doing this video. I think this is an unprecedented amount of truck passages. <laughs> That and, and these trucks are these huge cement truck trucks because they're building up there. I feel like this is like a feeling of, and I'm gonna let this pass because it's really loud. I won't even be able to edit it out. It's so loud. But to me, what these trucks, I'm back now. To me, what these trucks are is they are symbolic of this heavy load. These are concrete trucks. They're heavy loads. We have to drop the heavy load. Whatever has been heavy for you, whatever has felt not supportive to you. That's what you have to release in order to claim this beautiful new beginning of the solar eclipse. So, and also Aquarius, Libra trines your energy. Beautiful ease, grace, and flow wind at your back with this energy, very supportive. Um, when I tune into your energy with spirit, I got, I felt this big smile, this big smile in my heart. And Spirit said, you know what to do, just give yourself permission to follow your heart. Just say yes to your heart. It's that simple. If you haven't read my book yet, The Magic of Saying Yes, Answering Your Heart's True Calling, that would be very appropriate as a guide for you during this time, especially if what you want to do is scary. I know some of my daughter's roommates read the book right when it came out, and they went and did this big trip to all over the world. And they still tell me, it's very sweet, they still tell me that the book really helped them to get up the courage to do that, to go, to pack their backpacks and go into unknown territory. Um, so that's your message from Spirit. Let me, and that was ninth house, long distance travel. So there's a reason that came up for me. Okay, let me, let me pull a card for you now, Aquarius. Ah, Aquarius, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, Aquarius, you can do it. <laughs> oh, I'm letting my freak flag fly, Aquarius, I know you can relate. Authentic self, right? Full authentic expression, gotta do it. Okay, Aquarius. This card says trust. You're on a journey. You may feel that it is a dark night for some of you. Some of you may feel like, I know I want to get in my canoe and go, but I don't know where it's taking me and all I have is this tiny little bit of moonlight and that is not enough light. I don't know where I'm going. Trust. Trust the process. You will be led. You will be shown. You can always ask whenever you're at an impasse, whenever you're at a point of not knowing, you can always ask. But this card is saying, maybe there isn't enough information yet for a reason, for a reason. Trust that. Trust the timing and know that you are protected. You are divinely protected. Lots of protection with ninth house transits, especially. This is the Jupiter house. You will have everything you need for this beautiful journey. Aquarius, are you about to do something scary to take a journey to take a new adventure? If you are, I would love to hear. Leave me a comment. Or if you're trying to get up the courage, whatever you want to share. I love connecting with you. Okay, Capricorns. Hello, beautiful Capricorn. Capricorn. You are experiencing the new moon solar eclipse in Libra. Libra, Capricorn, you're experiencing this in your 10th house of career. This is the house of fulfillment, of vocation, of passion, of legacy, retirement for some of you, um, <laughs> semi-retirement for some of you. You Are you thinking about career? Are you thinking about making a change? This eclipse is course correct us. This eclipse with the south node here in your 10th house of career is saying there is some attachment you have to let go of. Maybe it's to a career you've done for a long time, some of you. 
Maybe it's to a way you thought your career would be. Maybe it's to where you thought you should be right now, that I always thought by now I'd be here. I always thought I would have done this. It's not too late, but there may be a mindset that some of you need to release, like I'm too old, or I don't have the energy, or I don't have the support, or I don't have the money. Maybe there's something you have to release there. Maybe that's your... Uh, maybe you have to release an attachment to a story or an attachment to I need certain family members to agree with me or support me or believe in me. No, all you need Capricorn is for you to believe in you, for you to believe in you. Um, your message from spirit is onward and upward. There's a new goal. There's a new life chapter that is being initiated for you that you are initiating Onward and upward, Capricorn, you're the mountain goat. You, you climb, you initiate new things. This lunation makes a square to your energy. This sounds not good, <laughs> like pressure and tension, which it can feel like. It can feel like heaviness, but it gives you the motivation and the drive to go forward, to take action. It gives you the motivation to say yes to this new life chapter. And maybe for some of you, you are starting a new career. You are starting a whole new business. And this is vocation house. This is you living your passion, Capricorn. And it's going to, um, it's going to bring you more meaning, more. This is the, the Mary Oliver quote. How do you want to spend your one wild and precious life? Okay, so Capricorn, let's pull a card for you and see what the cards say. <sighs> and your card is Capricorn Abundance. Abundance. Isn't this such a beautiful card? You have nothing to worry about. You're going to have everything you need, time, money, energy, and resources that you need to make this happen. Just decide what your heart wants and go for it. You are well-resourced, beautiful Capricorn. Leave me a comment. Let me know if this resonates for you. I'd love to hear. Okay, Sagittarius. Hello, beautiful Sag. Sag, you are having this new moon solar eclipse in your 11th house of friendships, social media, your online networking. These are your groups that you belong to, your meetups, your organizations that you, you know, causes. And this is also any alliances that you have. Um, this is also hopes, wishes, and dreams and long-term gains. So this is definitely a wish house. This is like our the dream of your life, the current dream of your life. So it's a really beautiful placement for an eclipse. This is where you're seeking a life upgrade. This is where spirit's giving you a course correction. And this is where you have to, though, let go of some attachment to something that's expired for you, a karmic contract, a soul, something that maybe felt like a soul contract, but that, that's no longer in alignment with your energy. You have to release some attachment. It could be to a friendship. It could be to a group. It could be to a cause that you're just, you just don't feel it anymore. It's just not you anymore. You've outgrown it. You're no longer, you're no longer a match for it. And so your message from spirit is that you, this is what I got. I got an image when I was tuning into you of you like going over these bumps. It felt like maybe they were speed bumps. It wasn't like an obstacle in the road, but it was like up and down, up and down. Okay, stop, go over a bump, stop, go over a bump and so on. So they were like waves. They were like ripples. I also got the feeling that you were like surfing some waves. Like it may feel a little bit bumpy for you right now. It may feel like you have to navigate some things that aren't comfortable, but they it's taking you forward. Don't let that stop you, Sag. Okay. So Sag, let's pull a card for you and see what the cards have to say for you. And your card is patience, Sag. Oh my gosh, that is so much in alignment with the bumps. Like the, it may be up and down a little bit. It may be up and down, but just know that that is part of the process. And you soon are going to fly. You can see this full moon. Perhaps at the lunar eclipse, you're going to feel some more movement. But remember, eclipses play out over a six-month to two-year period. So Right now, you're en route to passing over this full moon, which is going to be October 28th, and you are going to be soaring. You're going to be soaring like this beautiful water bird, I believe it is, but have patience in the interim, beautiful Sag. Does this resonate for you? Because if it does, I'd love to hear. Leave me a comment. I love connecting with you. 
Okay, Scorpio, thank you for your patience. Beautiful Scorpio, you are having this eclipse in your 12th house. You're having this eclipse in your 12th house of retreat, rejuvenation. It's the house of the mystic. This is where we do the deep dive. We rewire our subconscious mind. We release a story about who we thought we were that was not fully empowering. Um, and this is where you can really receive a gift from the divine about where you're headed. This is also the house of foreign lands. So for some of you, you could be wanting to venture into a foreign land. You could be wanting to move to another country. Others of you, you are releasing some sort of attachment that is connected to the mind. It's connected to your mindset. It's connected to the subconscious and it's no longer serving you. It could be a relationship that isn't, isn't, hasn't been um, fully, you know, um, nurturing to you. It hasn't fulfilled you. It's not enough for you. And you're letting that go. So everyone, all of us, every single one of us, regardless of sign, we have to release something. As I said in the introduction, we have to let go of a karmic attachment. And in order to make space for something new, this is a beautiful house to do visioning in, to do a vision board, to go into your imagination, to do deep dive meditations and receive a gift from your spirit, from the divine that is a clue to where you're headed. And I do have meditations for you. I'll link the playlist list below for you. And as well, you could go to my website and download a beautiful soothing guided meditation from my website, instant download. When you sign up for my inspirational updates, Scorpio, for free, of course. So um, spirit says to you, let go, don't hold on to something that is expired. Let it's time to let go and open up to the new. There's something new. There's new abundance, new opportunities that want to come in for you, Scorpio. And Mars is in your sign. Mars goes in your sign just before the eclipse. So that's really going to help you going forward, I think, to feel that drive again. If you haven't been feeling that drive, Mars in your sign is going to really help you. Okay, Scorpio. <sighs> Let's pull a card for you, Scorpio. Beautiful Scorpio, your card is, ooh, protection. Even though there may be thunder and lightning, even though you may feel discombobulated, even though there may be chaos or electrification or magnification of energy that happens during an eclipse, you are protected. You are the tree with the deep root system. Nothing is going to make you falter because you are deeply rooted in the energy of your true self, your pure love soul, Scorpio. So never forget that. Call on your guides and angels. You are divinely protected. Leave me a comment. Let me know if this resonates for you. I love connecting with you. Okay, my beautiful friend, this has been a general reading of the new moon solar eclipse in Libra. If you would like a personal astrology consultation, if you'd like a personal reading of how this eclipse energy is affecting you, not only this eclipse, but the full moon lunar eclipse that we're having in Taurus coming up at the end of October, and then we have big planetary shifts happening. We have Pluto going into Aquarius. We have a lot happening at the beginning of next year. We have major, major shifts happening right now. So if you would like to know how all of these shifts and changes with the planets are affecting you personally in your natal astrology chart, we can do a life purpose reading. We can do a heart's desire reading. We can do a natal chart reading. And I can let you know what is happening in your chart currently, what's coming up for you in terms of future transits, and what do I see in your chart that will empower you, your gifts, talents, your potentials, and how you can best navigate this time with the most ease, grace, and empowerment. Just go to my website, check out my testimonials that other clients have left. If you'd like some coaching, clarity coaching, I also offer you deep dives, transformational soul coaching, Check out my coaching page as well, and that should give you a sense of whether you feel called to work with me. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your subscribes. When you subscribe to my channel, you send a message to the algorithm, which then puts my videos out to more people who love astrology, and it really supports the growth of my channel. So I'm sending you so much gratitude. Thank you to my Sunday chat friends for joining me. And thank you to all of you for joining me for this video, regardless of when you're watching. I wouldn't be here without you. I am so grateful for your presence, your time, your energy, your connection in this like-minded community. And as I promised, I have a free gift for you. And that free gift 
is a guided meditation, a soothing guided meditation, so you can connect with your divine guidance, receive a gift of wisdom from the divine. And to get that, just go to my website, sign up for my inspirational updates, and you will receive an instant download of your free gift. So until my next video, my friend, I'm sending you all my love.